Hi everyone, hope you're having a great day wherever you're at. Today I'm gonna to be talking about WGU, specifically the Discrete Math 2 course. So let's get right into it. People on Reddit and YouTube will talk about this being one of, if not the hardest courses in WGU's online Bachelor of Science and Computer Science program. And so I think that's kind of fair, but I don't think it's as crazy difficult as some people say. It, the real challenge, I think, is the time that it takes to really learn all the material. So there's a lot of things going on in Discrete Math 2. A lot is drawn from Discrete Math in terms of like the fundamentals from that first Discrete Math 1 course. But there are other things that just take extra time to really get down. So one thing that is really worth having a mastery of, or at least good competency in, is the big O notation like for algorithmic complexity. That's something that I actually didn't study enough, but I still was able to pass the uh, objective assessment on my first attempt, which was great. I'm pretty sure though that I miss most of the big O notation and then generally algorithmic complexity questions on the OA. So that's something that if I needed to retake the course in the future for any reason, I don't need, I, you know, I don't think I need to do that, but if someone forced me to retake it or something, I would definitely study that more. One thing that I did study enough, which I'm glad for was modulus and uh, modulo function uh, operations, module operations. Those are definitely on the exam. So having those down, like what those look like, how to solve them is perfect. And a tip that I got from uh, YouTuber Josh Matikor, and which was super helpful, was to not only get a calculator, I got the TA84+, plus, but to, to install OmniCalc on the calculator. So it's pretty straightforward to install that. But once you have it on your calculator, it's great because you can do a lot of things that you can't do without it. So like, here's what OmniCalc looks like. Yeah, okay, cool. So that, that zoomed in decently. So OmniCalc's cool because basically it allows you to do fun things like you can do the modulo function. And the way to do that looks a little bit weird. So like you actually type it in as like this. So real, if you want to do the modulo of 879, 25, you would do real 28 comma 879 comma 25. But even though it's cryptic looking, kind of nice for doing stuff like that. So yeah, not only can you do the modulo operator with OmniCalc, but you can do the prime factorization. So like, let's say you had a question where it's like, okay, what is the prime factorization of, you know, 852 or something? And you're like, I honestly don't really know. Well, you can plug that right into your calculator using OmniCalc's notation. So that would look like uh, real and then 23, 852 and then it would pump it out. So two squared times three times 71, which pretty nice to be able to do that right in your calculator. So OmniCalc's big win for that. There's also some other things that were on the objective assessment that I don't think take as much time to study because they're a little bit straightforward, which is great. So things like going through the different like vertex trees those are, I think, pretty straightforward. So there's a lot of questions on, on that on the exam, but definitely, definitely straightforward enough to where if you don't study a ton, I think it'll be able to go smoothly. I will say though, one thing I wish I'd studied a lot more in addition to the algorithmic complexity stuff is all the things that have to do with probabilities, but specifically like conditional probabilities, Bayes, theorem and then other sorts of probabilities like that. Like here's an example of a type of question that could get asked on the exam that I didn't really know how to think through enough. And I did okay, like I guessed on some of them and I, I was able to pass the exam, but I wish I had studied more. Things like, let's say you have like five quarters, you flip all of them a few times and then each time you flip them, you take away one quarter, what's the chances of getting like four heads in a row? 
like stuff like that where it's like okay there's a few things going on here and i need to like really break it down but also understand how the probabilities interact if there's conditional probabilities so things like that are definitely worth studying i wish i had studied that more let's see other things yeah so there's a lot of questions that are also like okay if you have you know here's an example i'm not reading off of the exam or anything but it's like it, let's say you have like 10 soccer balls five coaches each coach chooses one soccer ball how many different ways are there for the coaches to choose those so that's going to be like setting up the five choose 10 notation but then there's also going to be multi-set questions where it's like oh if there's a bunch of people they each choose subsets of these things what how many possibilities are there for that so all of that stuff definitely worth looking into i feel like i was pretty confident on that which was great so yeah some of my biggest tips for discrete math two are one to go through the zybooks like to at least go through, through the whole thing once even if you don't understand everything on your first go i recommend just going through all of it and one recommendation I had heard was to do all of the practice problems for like all the units. If you want to devote the time to do that, I think that's excellent. Like if you do that, you'll probably be close to guaranteed to passing the exam on your first try. But let's say you want to skim through things and do some of the problems. I recommend doing at least some of the problems for each unit, maybe like 30 to 40. 60% of the problems and Zybux it'll actually tell you the percentage of the problems you've done which is cool and then once you've done that you've at least got some competency to where you can take the pre-assessment and then if there's any issues that you have like there's one that you, you one category of information that you're really not competent in you can just skill up in that area I think that's a good approach. That's the approach I used personally. I did not solve every problem in the Zy books, although that would have been good. Let me see, another tip, yep, OmniCalc for the calculator, definitely get a calculator. You can use TA-83 plus or TA-84 plus on the exam. I'm not sure if you can use TA-84 plus CE, which is the color edition, not sure on that. So I would personally just stick with the one that's guaranteed to be fine and the best one is TA84+. You can probably get a used one for cheaper. I wasn't able to find a used one before I needed to take the exam, so I just got a new one. It's about 140 bucks. Not cheap, but I actually like it a lot because I'm gonna be using it more for other things. Let me see, what else? So, yeah, and I say be patient too. Like, let's say you've been accelerating classes pretty quick and then you get to discrete math too. Don't, I would rec, so what, here's one thing I told myself, this is why I can say. Um, it took me a few weeks to finish discrete math too. Whereas there were a lot of classes I finished in like one, two, three days. This one does take a little more time just cause there's a lot of content. Even if you don't go through all the practice problems, like I, I didn't do that. I think theoretically you could do it in like four days if you devoted like eight, 10 hours a day just to studying the material and going through all the practice problems. But it'll probably take a little longer than anticipated. I was doing a, an RU, which is, which is like a research internship over this summer. So I actually didn't work that much on Discrete Math 2. I started it late June and I finished it mid-August. And I'm fine with that. Like it was gonna be my last class of my term. So it worked out, but one, what I, all this to say, don't be worried if it does take more time than you anticipate. That's, that's okay. And if you have any other specific questions, you can totally look on Reddit for your question on the WGU message boards. You can also feel free to leave a comment below. I'll definitely give an answer for what, what I think can maybe be helpful. But yeah, thanks for watching this. If you want to learn more about WGU, you can let me know. I can post more videos. There's also a bunch of great videos here on YouTube. So yeah, thanks for watching.